Hey, I'm Jeremy, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Practical IT. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the Turnkey Linux Domain Controller Appliance. We're going to get it installed and start taking a look around it a little bit. So without further delay, let's get started. bring up our trusty virtual box this is version 6.0.4 the latest version and I've got the basic uh, shell of the turnkey domain controller uh, right here and so we will go ahead and get started on the install so turnkey Linux is available from turnkeylinux.org let's get started with our install all right, first thing it wants us to do is enter a password for the root account. And again. We are going to create the Active Directory. And we are going to call this, uh, let's see, we'll call it practical it dot lan and apply it and that's good practical it for the domain and samba administrator account I'm going to do the same thing I did before And it's going to go through and it's going to do its install. This is a Debian based Linux distribution. And as you can see scrolling on the screen, it's installing Samba 4 with the Active Directory schema. Uh, so we've got uh, good stuff happening here. Okay, hub services. This is optional. We're going to skip it. Notifications. We are going to skip it and let it go through its thing. Now, uh, so the DC1 appliance services. Before we go any further, oops, before we go any further. I am going to take a screenshot of this. So now I've got all my IP addresses available on the other screen. And we are going to take a look at the advanced menu here real quick like. So we can look at the appliance networking. Of course, if you're going to use this in production, I would highly recommend sending a static IP address we're going to let's reboot because I think we've got it all installed Okay, so any changes you made to the life system will not be installed to the hard disk. Okay. So we're going to get things going for the install. Use entire disk. Write changes and configure LVM. And that's good. Right changes to disk. And it's going to run through the install. Install the grub bootloader to the master boot record. Yes. Since this is a VM, there's no harm in doing that at all. Restart now. Yes. And I will be back after this gets restarted. Okay, 
We are back and we can switch into Firefox. And so the first thing we're going to do is go to 172.16.74.224. And we've got our turnkey domain controller. And if we go look at each of our options. So the web shell. And it shows us that is on port 12320. Webmin is on 12321. The Samba configuration is under 12321 slash Samba slash index.cgi. And then printing is port 631. So let's first take a look at Webmin. And we will add our exception. And log in with root and the password that was set during the install. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my last pass. Okay, initialization before we get started. I don't want to do a turnkey hub. We don't need that. So, webmin got different things here actions and module fairly standard looking webmin configuration webmin users we'll close that up system boot up and shut down All good stuff there. Okay, networking. It's got fail to ban intrusion detector installed. Ready to go. So I think we're we're good there. Bring up our little dashboard. So the host name is dc1.practicalit.lan. We'll uh jump over here to our terminal and we don't have as it uh, should work we don't have it on our production network everything so far is looking the way it should we want to do and that's fine. Let's look at our Samba configuration. And so it is running Samba version 4.15.12 Debian. And we have pretty standard options here. And it doesn't look like we have anything configured by default. So I'm going to jump here. I'm going to take that to the other screen. We'll take a look at this article. And granted, this is an article from 2016. I will put a link down in the description. Uh, another Jack Wallen article from Tech Republic. How to deploy a Samba domain controller in under 10 minutes. Uh, they actually suggest in the article to download the uh, pre-installed virtual appliance but uh, as you've seen uh, we got the ISO image from turnkey Linux and ending up with basically the same thing let's jump over 1674224 colon one two three two one do that Okay, so we're back in our webmin and we want to go over to the Windows networking options. So under servers, Samba, 
Windows file sharing. We've got Windows networking. And that brings us up to our Windows networking option. Workgroup is practical IT. Wins mode, neither. Wins is old and shouldn't be used. Server name, we'll leave that at DC1. Default service, none. Max reported disk size, unlimited. Master browser, priority. We want that at highest. Highest protocol is default. Master browser, okay, master browser automatic. They've changed things around a little bit since the article was written. Uh, security default, that's all good. Save, we'll restart Samba servers, and then we'll restart Winbind servers. Maybe. All right, so let's take a look at Samba users. And so we've got administrator and we've set a password for that previously. Password set to never expire. I wouldn't generally advise this, but we're doing this for lab purposes. And so we will leave that as it is for the time being. So we'll go ahead and return to user list and return to share list. Under convert users, you can convert users that were added to the Linux side to also exist for the Windows side of things, which is all good. And of course there's Samba groups, group synchronization, again, does the same thing as the user synchronization, but for groups, if you created a group on the Linux side, then it can make it a Samba group. And there's all kinds of fun stuff. Samba servers do not appear to be running on your system. Start. Failed to start Samba servers, so we will do this a little bit different. Let's go back to system and let's just restart the whole VM. And that should have our desired effect of restarting Samba. And we will go to reboot appliance. Yes. All right. Let's jump back to our web browser. We'll do a refresh here. And let's go back to servers and Samba. And so yes, those are running. In the next video, we will be attempting to join a Linux virtual machine to the Samba Active Directory server we've got running on this virtual machine. Until next time, thank you for watching. Have a great day.